uh, forces that are running. There are going to be well over 100 uh, candidates standing in the local elections uh, who are what you would describe as uh, on the independent or socialist uh, left. Uh, so that, that's, that in itself is a milestone. <coughs> and just by way of a brief introduction to uh, our campaign and our manifesto, what I really uh, would like to say is that the context for this election is absolutely seething anger uh, among ordinary people out there about uh, a government that has betrayed all of the promises they made uh, before the last general election and has rained down betrayal, cuts and austerity on the innocent victims of this economic crisis. And our feedback on the door is that it's going to be payback day for the government on May the 23rd for the betrayals uh, that they have perpetrated against ordinary citizens in this country. Uh, and really it is, although local issues will obviously be important, this is also going to be a referendum on the credibility of this government uh, and uh, I think uh, an opportunity that the people are going to take uh, to, to pay back politicians who promised them one thing and gave them another. Um, some of the key things we want to uh, highlight are the, uh, our opposition to water charges and what we believe is the agenda to move from water charges to the privatisation of our water, uh, our op continued opposition to the uh, property and, and home taxes, which are, both of which are combining uh, to produce an absolutely furious anger among people who are uh, financially pinned to their collar just to survive, to keep a roof over their head, uh, and that anger, uh, is, we think, is going to be expressed in the local elections, uh, and it, it is a central plank of our campaign, is to continue our campaign of opposition and campaigning, both during this election campaign and beyond this election campaign, against household and property uh, taxes. Uh, another key issue we want to uh, feature, and some of our, uh, our candidates will talk more about it, is the housing crisis. Uh, I think we have been to the forefront for two and a half years in saying that there was a housing crisis uh, of historic proportions developing in this country. Uh, incredibly, a housing crisis coming after the biggest building boom in the history of the state, and yet we have the biggest housing and homelessness crisis in the modern history of the state. If ever there was an indictment of a bankrupt and failed government and failed policies mm -hmm. and failed priorities, it is uh, the emerging housing bubble uh, and the growing housing crisis. And I'm glad to say, on foot of a suggestion that I made to the technical group in the Dáil, that will be discussed in the Dáil today, uh, today and uh, tomorrow. And many families who are, uh, have connections with some of our candidates here will be coming into the Dáil tomorrow who are affected by this crisis uh, to put it in the government's face how they have failed people in the most basic thing of putting a roof over their head. Uh, the last two uh, issues that I would like to highlight are sort of general issues is the uh, issue of jobs, uh, the critical importance of meaningful jobs, not exploitative uh, fake jobs like these gateway jobs, which are just really uh, a way of massaging the, the, dole, the dole figures and uh, trying to exploit people to do jobs that should be properly paid jobs in the provision of local services uh, for local uh, authorities. So that is a central plank of our campaign. And the last, uh, last point, general point, is the issue of democracy and accountability at both at local government level and at national level is absolutely in the forefront of people's minds. People are so angry that politicians can make promises before an election and then systematically betray those promises. And what they want, and what we are standing for in this election, is to have a system of government at local and national level where politicians will be held accountable not just every five years, but, an on, but on an ongoing basis by their communities, by civil society, by ordinary citizens. So the decisions are not inflicted on people, but people have a real say in the decisions that affect their lives. So those are some of the general themes of our campaign and of our election manifesto. Now I'm going to hand over to Councillor Breed Smith, one of our councillors in uh, Ballyfermot, and she's going to say a few words, and then a few of the candidates here will say a few words, and we'll open up for questions. Okay, um 
just to start, Richard asked me to summarise the document, but I, I think he's more or less done that himself, so I'll just make a few points uh, that I jump out at me on, on top of what Richard has said, and I think he, he put it very, very well indeed. First of all, I've just spent the last five years as a councillor elected for a big working class area in West Dublin, and I had no illusions going in there that it was going to be the vehicle that would change the world. Um, quite the opposite, I believe that the struggle of ordinary people is what will change uh, the government's minds, what will change the minds of the economists who run society, and what will change the minds ultimately of the council and how they behave. And so all the time that we're in council, and all of our candidates will acknowledge this, part of what we do is to, to be a voice for the people inside and to help mobilise and organise the anger outside the council chambers as well. So I'm really delighted that we, as well as having the stats that Richard gave on being an expanding party and having 40% women, we also now have candidates in Donegal, Sligo, Kerry, Cork, Waterford, Wexford, Wicklow, and, and beyond. Um, I, I, if I fail to mention any of the areas, I'm sorry about that, but there's an impression that People Before Profit is just a Dublin-based party. Quite the opposite, we're also running candidates in the local elections in Northern Ireland. So we're an all-Ireland uh, party that's beginning to make a difference, that's beginning to grow. And just to reiterate what Richard said, I think the reason for that is that the level of anger against the austerity measures, the cuts, the blatant neoliberalism of this government, and in particular the Labour Party, runs very, very deep indeed in working class areas. And I do believe that Labour are going to get a trouncing in this election. Uh, it's not good enough to believe that. One has to also provide an alternative to them. And that's what all our candidates are here today to do. And when they return to their own uh, counties and areas, that's exactly what they'll do. I do want to raise a point on democracy because it never ceases to shock me how undemocratic the council chambers are. That every time we pass a motion on, for example, three times we voted against the privatization of waste management, overwhelming vote against the privatization of waste management, the manager says, it doesn't matter, I'm going to do it anyway. Three or four times we voted against the continuation of the contract over food bag. The manager says, it doesn't matter, I'm going to do it anyway. Quite recently we voted not to conduct a, a review into Dublin Fire Brigade with the purpose of looking at privatising it. The manager says, it doesn't matter, I'm going to do it anyway. But interestingly on the latter, the only thing that stopped him in his tracks was a march of several hundred fire brigade uh, members, firefighters, ambulance crew and their families and their supporters up through the city, into the city council chambers, and an announcement from management that they would hold back on their plans. So it's very important that we understand there is very little democracy for the people who will be democratically elected to the councils all over the country from this party, but what they can do is to use the councils to mobilise workers and communities from the outside to challenge that agenda. Thanks very much, Breed. Uh, and next is John Lyons, who is our candidate in the Artenian. Uh, in Bono, Bono, mm -hmm. Bono, Bono. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, I'd just like to speak briefly on the housing and homeless, uh, homelessness crisis that we're facing uh, right across the country and most acutely in Dublin. Uh, people for Profit, I think, has pledged and it's in our manifesto here today that uh, when elected, all of our councillors really need to push to the fore, which what is the biggest single task of any local authority, which is to provide social uh, housing for the people, affordable, comfortable uh, housing for the people. And I think they've failed utterly over the past four to five years. And as Richard said earlier, we came to one of the biggest property bubbles in world history. And we have currently in uh, Dublin City alone, 16,000 households waiting on the housing waiting list. And just going on the doors, uh, the biggest issue for people, aside from the hated uh, water charge, is actually housing. And I think we need to really push it to the fore. Uh, the recent announcement by the Minister of Responsibility for Housing John O'Sullivan, I think, was a disgrace. She announced that over the next two years, uh, they're going to spend 68 million building uh, 449 new houses when there's 98,000 households on the waiting list. I think it's an insult to the people that I meet uh, day to day, some of whom have been on the waiting list for over 10 years, and all they want is to have a place that they can call home, where they can actually make a home and rear their family. And I think the government have been utterly despicable in how they've treated these people some of whom have lingered even 14 to 15 years on that waiting list. So what People for Profit is pushing forward here today is um, a major policy which is to provide social housing because the state is rolling back on that and we will push at a council level that the state has to provide social housing uh, for the 98,000 households across the country. Secondly, we have a major uh, spike in rents right across the country 
but again, most acutely in Dublin, with uh, rents for apartments going up, uh, going up eight percent last year, and for houses by six point three percent. And I think what we need uh, to see here in Dublin, and what we would push on the council, is rent controls. We need to have um, serious regulation that will uh, control the rents because they're going through the roof, as they say. But we also need uh, 